When we first start up Blender, one of the first things that I like to do is switch from uh, selecting with the default right click, right mouse click, and changing it to the left mouse click, so that's under user preferences. Okay, so now we want to set up the, uh, the 3D view. Right now it's in perspective mode, if you press numpad 5, you can go between orthographic and perspective. So we'll be working in orthographic mostly. Perspective means that as things get further away, they look smaller. And orthographic is the opposite of that. More or less, orthographic means that things are drawn to scale. And then with the mouse over a window, using the numpad, this is numpad 7 to for top view, numpad 1 for front view, numpad 3 for side view. If you uh, select an item by now left clicking, or you can choose right clicking if you prefer the, the uh, default way. So if you select an object, you can scale it by pressing S, and then by pressing, uh, in this case, Z, it'll scale just in the, along the Z axis. So you can squash it and give yourself a bit of a floor. And it's a good idea often to name objects, a good habit to get into naming a lot of things, as we'll see as we go along. Another thing that I like to do is get rid of the uh, gizmo. Many people like to use it for moving and scaling and, and whatnot, but uh, I've got all the shortcut keys memorized, so I like using them. So now we're going to add a plane, and that will eventually be our image. But we're going to animate the plane as if it were a bouncing ball. So we're going to have a bouncing rectangular plane. Give it a color, new material, and then just drag in the diffuse value to uh, set the color. You can, the uh, specular value says how shiny it is, so you can dull it up just by dropping the value the specular value of the material. Blender has a few ways of looking at something. The solid view is quicker to render, but uh, Blender has a nice rendered setting so that you can look at your objects as if they were being rendered. Now I've added a cube. And uh, if we're looking down from the top, this would be like a wall. But uh, when I'm doing 2D, I often like to think of the terms of uh, moving the, sorry, using the camera from the top view. So now what I call the floor will be a back wall. <laughs> 
and uh, the cube we just added will be the floor that we'll bounce off of. So if we put the image, which is right now just a square, at the, and looking in the top view, it's up, or actually it's toward the y-axis, up on the y-axis. So if we want to bring it all the way down to where it would be at the bottom of the bounce, and then in the timeline there at the bottom, we can press I to insert a keyframe, and uh, in the timeline move to where it'll be at the top of its swing, and press I for inserting a keyframe there too. And now notice that uh, in the view we've got set to solid, we can move the playhead, the green line is called the playhead, if you move it and watch as it uh, as you move, that's called scrubbing. So we can scrub the playhead to see how our animation is going to work. Now I move the playhead to the full length that we want for our animation, or at least temporarily, so we have. Lots of lots of frames to watch our animation in. If you want your animation to loop, you can copy the keyframes and drag them so that the uh, beginning keyframe matches the end free game keyframe. We're going to use, uh, set the video to run it, the animation to run at 30 frames per second. So 60 frames is two seconds. So we've copied our keyframes. So this should go, if it starts at the top and then down and then up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's hit the play button. Add one extra set in there. So it will be two seconds starting at the bottom. Starting, sorry, at the top. Down, up, down, up, down, up. And then now it's looping. So it seems to be looping smoothly. We have a, uh, a nicely bouncing square, so let's create an image, a picture of our ball. So we're going to open GIMP, and get rid of any plants that you've got growing in it. New file, file new, and then uh, go with 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And uh, create a new layer. Notice the checkerboard pattern suggests that uh, that, transparent, uh, that layer is transparent, which is what we want. So we're going to draw this on a transparent layer. We use the circle select tool and dragged it out to create a circle, holding the shift key down so that it remains a perfect circle. And then with GIMP you can set a color and just drag it into, um, it will flood whatever is selected. Now you can also GIMP uh, to create a PNG file, which is what we want. Create a PNG file. You just do export as and then make sure that when you name it, you finish with .png. Make sure it's in a location you're going to be able to find it easily. Notice that I hid the white layer so that 
we won't have a white rectangle around it. So here it is in the uh, finding with the operating system and the file system. So we know we can find it easily. So let's go back to Blender. We have an, uh, a material. So this is uh, using Blender internal rendering rather than Blender cycles. Blender cycles is quite a bit different than this. So if you're using Blender internal, we have to create a separate texture this way, name it, and uh, make sure it's an image texture. And uh, with an image texture, you have the option to open and find the image file. And at the top of here, you have the option of look at the thumbnails. So here we have the thumbnails, and there's our circle again. But it doesn't look like a circle yet. So what we can do is uh, we could UV unwrap it, which would be the default this time, but Instead, we'll use generated. There, it's circular, but it's showing the green around the edges rather than transparent. So we have a few properties to set yet. So in the trans, uh, in the uh, texture settings, you can view uh, alpha, but that doesn't fix it. And then down here in the influence. There's one for alpha, using alpha. But then we even have to go to the materials. There's a transparency. Turn it on and then drag the value of the transparency all the way down to zero. Well, now that's black, but if you look, it's a little offset. That's because that's not actually a color. That's a shadow left by the entire rectangle. So how can we get rid of that? Shadeless. Maybe better to use, but uh, that's not about shadows. Okay, down here there's actually shadow properties. And we can decide whether or not our image can accept a shadow. But uh, how about if we take the background and say it doesn't want to accept a shadow. There we go. So if the uh, object we're using is a background, Sorry, transparent shadows won't accept uh, or is set for transparent shadows, then only the colored part of our image casts a shadow. Actually, it, uh, well, what we're going to do, we probably won't even want a shadow on that because we're going to lose the background object after a while. So at the bottom of our bounce, let's have the ball squash a bit. So when it hits the floor, it squashes. And uh, so how's that going to look? Notice again that the solid view keeps up a lot better than the rendered view. So it helps to look at the solid view where you see the rectangle. The image is a rectangle still. Anyway, our ball takes too long. It shouldn't start to squish until it hits the floor. So it's put it where, just as where it starts to squish, and as we inserted a keyframe in the time, we set the timeline first, and then make our changes, so we change the scale, so then we press I, and select scale. Now we want to do the same thing for as the ball is going up, put, uh, change the timeline, Make your changes by scaling the ball, and then insert the keyframe to adjust the scaling. So we can do that for each bounce, or we could just copy. So we select, so you can select just the top most keyframes with these settings. Hit Control D to duplicate. Oops. Try that again. Control D to duplicate and G to move. 
Control D again, G to move again. Let's duplicate. Remember we had to change the scale of the, when it's a flat that we hadn't duplicated, so we'll duplicate right when it, the ball hits the floor for each of the bounces. Okay, and hit play to test it. It looks good in the solid view. But again, the rendered view can't keep up. We've got to set the camera. So in our corner view there, we can change the view to display the camera view by pressing numpad zero. Now if we move the camera, we'll have to move the camera so that we can see our scene again. So let's adjust the actual size of the camera. If you go to the camera red render settings and set the uh, change the aspect ratio so that they match, then the camera will display a square. So I'm using 1080 by 1080. So the the camera is a perspective camera, so that when we, if we want to set the size of our scene, we just can move the camera up and down. There is another orthographic type of camera, but we'll leave that also for another time. So just setting everything up. Notice the uh, light shining off the background there. We have the option again of, if we set the ball to shadeless, we will be able. To, we won't need to worry about lighting. Now we don't actually want the back, uh, the uh, wall behind, and the floor below as part of this animation. We're just going to animate the image itself. So click on the wall behind and press H. If we render it, well, there's the wall. So how can we render so there is no wall? And the answer is if we select that wall behind. If we want it not to render, we can put it onto another blender layer. We move the wall to another layer, move the floor to another layer, and then when we render, all we see is the ball. Now since we can watch the solid view in real time, it makes kind of a, a cute square bounce. So getting ready for rendering, let's go into the render properties. Make sure it's rendering to PNGs as a matter, interestingly enough, we want PNGs and make sure it's an alpha. So that's what RGBA is. A stands for alpha, which is the transparency. Make sure that uh, you're saving to a dedicated file because you're going to get a bunch of PNGs, one for each frame. Give it a dedicated folder and the name isn't so important, and it's going to add a bunch of information to the name you give as well. Just want to mention that to instead of 60 frames, if you only wanted, say, 15 frames, then you would set the step value to 4, and then it will render out every fourth frame. Now, if we go to open with and use the GIMP, it will open the first image as a layer, and that will set the size of the image that we want. Now all the rest will be opened as layers. So you go to, in GIMP, you go to File, Open image as layers, select all but the for one that's already in, and uh, bring them in, and they should go in as layers. Now, if we want to make a, a GIMP, uh, sorry, a GIF animation, just give it, uh, use file, export as, and then give the extension .gif.
GIMP will know that if it's a GIF, then you have the option of saving it as an animation. So make sure that as animation is checked and make sure that you also have one frame per layer. Otherwise you'll have a just a smear. Now, depending on how big your animation is, it might take a while to render. But uh, find your GIF image. And if you open it using a web browser, then you should be able to see your GIF animation quite easily. And you can uh, open with, and I like to use Chrome, so it's working with Chrome. It's giving it a black background. And when you get into web design, you can use whatever you want as a background. So that's working good. But what if we wanted to give this thing a shadow? It shows exactly how high the object is when it's in the air. So, how can we add a shadow? We could use Blender's shading and shadows and shading using the light source, but for this one, we'll just create an image that'll act as our shadow and animate it as well, just for the sake of reinforcing what we just learned about keyframing. So we've added a rectangle to be our shadow image. Now we go back to GIMP and we can create another circle. Again, make sure that you um, add a layer so that you've got a transparent background. And then what color should a shadow be? Probably a, a gray. But shadows should also be transparent or semi-transparent. So we'll add the grayness. And then selecting the layer that is the shadow. Let's just save it. Save this as a PNG. Uh, you could save it as a GIF, but uh, no. Make sure it's a PNG, then you have different options for uh, how transparent it is. So there's 50% opacity. We'll bring the background, the white background back in to just look at how transparent that is. That's color on the white background, so we see. So that's too transparent. Let's bring the opacity up again. And then we'll lose the background entirely and uh, export as a PNG with the transparent background. Make sure that uh, you name it with the PNG extension and where you can find it again. Now let's add that to as a material. Create a new material, call that shadow. And then we want to, because we're working in Blender internal, save that to uh, create a texture to be added to the material, an image texture. We've named it because we've got more than one. Make sure it's an image. And uh, well, let's find that image we created for it. Again, we can view thumbnails. And there it is. Again, to uh, make it into a circle, it's using generated for the mapping. And to make sure it's a transparent background, We'll go down into the influence settings and make sure alpha is on. Then back into the materials. 
and uh, we don't want shiny shadows so we'll turn down the specular value turn on the transparency value and pull the elf all the way down to zero later on we on another day we'll see how to do all that with the, the new render cycles well not terribly new it's uh, at least five years old but cycles is awesome for video but uh, if you're wanting to animate for other render engines for example unity has a in any other game engine has a very fast but impressive looking render engine blender cycles is impressive but it's way too slow for using in a game so we have to get used to using different render engines anyway so just so we can th see things better we're giving the uh, using the world values to so that we've got a white background by setting the the color in the world settings this is just for testing we'll end up rendering as a with a transparent background again so we can see the keyframes for the ball that we rendered earlier. Now as we make changes, insert keyframes for the shadows there, those values are added in the dope sheet below the in more in a separate channel underneath so we scale it down insert a keyframe for scale remember to, to move the timeline then make your changes then insert the keyframe and uh, so as the ball drops as the ball is higher up the shadow will be smaller and then as it comes down the shadow grows and we'll repeat that process yes it helps to name objects and that way you can find them easier in the dope sheet and if you change your mind about what uh, if, for example something as basic as deleting a keyframe you can't do that in the timeline you have to do it in the in the dope sheet So again, we can duplicate keyframes rather than having to keyframe all over again. Again, testing, we can watch it in the solid view, but the rendered view just is not quick enough. Again, I was going back to what I was saying about render engines the uh, unity render engine is plenty fast enough to do this so we'll learn more about that when we get into gaming well, we notice that we're gonna have to move our camera so that we can fit the the shadow and the ball in all at the same time go back to the render settings so that uh, when we animate this thing We've got a transparent background, RGBA. Make sure that you save it to a dedicated folder because again, you're going to have lots of lots of frames rendered. Each frame will be an image. Set your frame step so that you don't have to render every frame. And again, once you've rendered them out, 
press the big animation button to render and then you can go find them and then open the first one with the GIMP and by opening the first one the it creates a new image that's the same size as that frame then you'll be able to go to file import as layers and select all the other images when they open they will be saved as layers now to make a GIF animation just uh, use export as then pick a good location and a name with the extension .gif gif if you don't give it an extension, Blender doesn't know what you're doing. And you click export, and because it's a GIF, you get uh, the option of making an animation. And once that's done, you can find where your uh, new GIF animation went to, and just by opening it, you can test it. Now, uh, if you remember that when we created the shadow, we used PNG and made it a semi-transparent shadow. One of the problems with a GIF is there is no semi-transparent pixels. They're either fully transparent or fully opaque. So in this case, the shadow is totally opaque.